Hey everyone, Karnak here, Star Wars Armada Explained. Today we're going to be looking at the Rebel title for the Nebulon B, Yavaris. An extremely popular title, very good. Why is that? Let's dive in. So Yavaris is a unique title. You see that dot there in front of its name with the bullet point? It signifies it's unique. You only have one of them in your fleet. How do you know it equips the Nebulon B? Well, there's a picture of one. Also, bottom left-hand corner, there's the icon showing it's for that class. It is faction specific to the Rebel Alliance only, which you can see there next to its point cost, which is five. So we're gonna go back real quick to the wiki. I wanna read the original card. The original card used to see used to say squadron command. You see the squadron command symbol on there, which signifies that you can if you do a squadron command, which is a dial, a token, or a dial and token resolve together, that's a squadron command. If you each squadron you activate can attack twice if it does not move. So they error to that. The new card now reads squadron command each squadron you activate can attack twice if it does not move during your activation. Why did they add the three words to the end of that? Uh, there is another card that the Nebulon can equip which is fighter coordination teams which uh, allows squadrons that are unengaged to be able to move up the distance one. So Yavaris was doing something where it also equipped something like Flight Commander in the officer slot, which allows you to activate squadrons after a movement. So something like this where, you know, maybe you've got your B-wings in range of that Star Destroyer, but up, oh, you know what, out of range. Well, then it would, uh, or rather, let's uh, push these B-wings back. And maybe there's something like, like that. Oh, you know, those B-wings are out of range. They can't reach it. Well, then you could uh, just move Yavaris ahead one. And then guess what? Now it's at close to medium range of these B wings, and now these B wings can trundle ahead and be all within distance one now of that star destroyer, and then still be in activation range of Yavaris. So it was a very powerful ability, and not only that, it could be used for lots of other types of engagements. But pretty much, um, it was a little powerful. They needed a way to try to, you know bring that card down in terms of its effectiveness so that's why they added those three words on the end of it about during your activation which means that that ship uh, during that ship's activation that's what it means the your it's specifying that that ship those squadrons cannot move so for example in this situation again is if Yavaris comes up and uses fighter coordination team to move any of those b-wings you can't use Yuvaris on them. Or in the reverse example, maybe those B-Wings have already been activated, uh, and maybe they have already used Yuvaris' effect. Again, Yuvaris can't come forward and move them with fighter coordination teams. They can, even though it doesn't say cannot, it's pretty specific in spelling out that it does not move during that ship's activation. It doesn't matter if it has fighter coordination team, either using it, you know, after a movement or just period those squadrons cannot use Yavaris's effect um, period uh, either before or after okay I want to make sure I'm specifying that so even if they've used Yavaris's ability before Yavaris has moved and then it moves cannot use fighter coordination team um, and now if you use them in the normal way if you don't use Yavaris's title at all you still can use fighter coordination teams with it but enough about that. I think you guys understand. You get what I'm getting at with this. Let's dive into the title. Why is this title so deadly? And I think you guys can pretty much already see why when I'm showing you three B-Wings in front of a Star Destroyer. So if Yavaris' title, if you choose to resolve it, is that each squadron can attack twice if it does not move during uh, their activation, meaning those squadrons. The rear activation being the ship, but also the squadrons. So something like this, where each of these squadrons are at distance one of that Star Destroyer. I mean, let's just play it out, folks. So here's uh, the first B-Wing, throwing a blue and a black. And three damage right off the bat. So we'll say, uh, you know what, maybe he's just going to brace it down to two. Okay. Well, then now here's the second attack. And uh, two damage. Okay, now what do you do with that? Okay, well, maybe you redirect it. You put two over here. Okay, now here comes the second B-Wing. Another two damage. Okay, we'll uh, we'll redirect 
Use the other token. Put some over here. And uh oh, the tokens are getting burned down. Here's the second attack. And uh, we'll say there's Bomber Command Center nearby. Oh well, look, another three damage. So we'll just say you burn that redirect then. Okay, so now there's the shields off the side. There's the shields off the front. Now here comes that third B-Wing. All right, third B-Wing, blue and a black, two damage. All right, so, you know, no criticals there. So let's just go ahead and take those on the nose. And then here's its second attack. Another three damage. What do you do? Well, you got to, you know, discard the brace and you hit the contain and then it's another two damage. So now your Star Destroyer essentially went from full health, you know, maybe you burn the redirect instead and you have eight hole, but full health to, to pretty much nothing left. And I have seen cases where if those B-Wings are throwing, and it can happen, a consistent three damage with each attack, they can kill a full health Star Destroyer all by themselves. It's crazy. I know it sounds crazy. Then don't don't forget the fact that Yavaris is still going to throw three red die after the fact into your Star Destroyer. So even if by a miracle, uh, if your Star Destroyer does survive, um, he's going to have little to no hole left. Pretty much anything else that even looks at it, it's going to explode it. And guess what? All you traded was maybe, maybe Yavaris for it. Yavaris can survive a front front shot from from an ISD. You know, pretty most of the time. So you can see why this title is just so powerful. Oh, and by the way, I activated the three B-Wings because the escort model uh, can field, can activate two. And then if it has a squadron token, that's why the three. I didn't point that out. I want to make sure I'm letting you know. It can't usually activate three uh, unless it has a squadron token. And again, it's an escort version that can do the two plus the one from the token is three. Perfect. But you can see why this title is so powerful, why it's so good. And not only just in terms of killing large ships, any other ship would have exploded by this point. Um, large ships can barely weather it. And, uh, of course, squadrons, you know, if you use them squad on squad, I mean, they, they're just ripped squadrons apart. So the, the card is extremely powerful. It's still really good to this day, even with that Erita on there. Um, as far as I'm aware, there's no other clarifications. There's no other crazy things or interactions that you should be aware of other than what I specified with the fighter coordination team. Um, again, the squadrons just don't move them at all. They just can't move if you want to use them with Yavaris. Of course, if you don't want to use Yavaris, you play with them like normal. Um, but yeah, so of course, if you feel like I missed anything or if I got anything wrong, please be sure to point it out. Let me know. I always respond to my comments. I always want to make sure I'm presenting the best information to the viewers. So as always, appreciate you guys watching, and I'll catch you next time.